Oh, please read the section in Chapter 7 on compression, the LZ compression. The basic idea behind the compression is to take advantage of repetitions in repeated sections of a document. This, and then replace those repetitions with some sort of a code that represents the repeated section. Now, this can be beneficial in a couple different ways, but the thing that I'd like to point out is that there are lots of documents like XML and JSON documents that are used in data transmission that are behind virtually every dynamic web page that you see and also documents that are transmitted between businesses especially XML that have large repeated sections and these repeated sections are things like uh, if there's a table of data in there, every column header is repeated for every row so that you can match up on the receiving end what the data looks like. So for a lot of these documents, there's tremendous benefit in replacing these repeated sections with some sort of a code that compresses it. In fact, there's good evidence today from file system research like um, the ZFS file system that Sun developed, that Oracle now, they bought Sun Corporation, they own it, that there are lots of cases in which it is actually better to compress the data and uncompress it when you need the actual data so that you're always compressing it than it is to leave it uncompressed. You save on both CPU time and on storage by doing that because fetching something from a disk or through a file system or across a communication node is not free. So the compression takes less time than the cost of sending the data back and forth uncompressed. So let's take a sample of text and let me point out what I mean by finding repeated sections. Theophilus Thistle, the unsuccessful thistle sifter, in sifting a sieve full of unsifted thistles, thrust 3,000 thistles through the thick of his thumb. You'll notice that uh, thistle is repeated four times in there as thistle and thistle s. So if we had some sort of a code that says 1 equals thistle, then we just have Theophilus 1, the unsuccessful 1 sifter, in sifting a fill sieve of unsifted 1s, thrust 3,000 ones through the thick of his thumb, and this is shorter. Now, if we do this repeatedly and we do it in a statistical fashion, we can end up with a smaller document overall. LZ compression implements this in an orderly fashion, and the w results of this is that normally for LZ compression, we have a table at the beginning of 4096 entries that is, this is how we compress the document. And then in the document, there are these codes that say, for this particular spot in the document, replace it with what's out of the table from the compressed, the compression table. And 4096, I put in the size there in binary and in hex. Now, there's no particular magic to the 4096. It's 12 bits. The people who wrote the original paper did some analysis, but you have these different, slightly different compression schemes. The important thing between them is how well they analyze for the repeated sections. And the book has a sample of the analysis that we'll go into on how you find the repeated sections. In the example, it uses the frequency of letters. But in a real compression scheme, what you're looking for is the frequency of substrings in the document. So the better your analysis of finding the repeated substrings and the more you can find them to build that table of repeated values, the better your compression. So the difference between the original compress program on Unix systems and a zip file is that they did a much better job of doing the compression. And the difference between that and uh, 7z, which is a more modern compression, is a still better way of analyzing documents. But the underlying algorithm for the compression has stayed pretty much the same. Now, they also apply this kind of compression to other things, like images. And in images, for instance, coming off of a Nikon camera, the full sensor for the camera is 56 megabytes. An average compressed, losslessly compressed image will turn that into 32 megabytes, saving 20 megabytes. And in the context of something like a camera, where you get 
Um, only so much memory and the number of pictures you can take is limited by that amount of memory. The fact that you can, without loss, compress every image as you're taking it means you get to shoot a lot more images. The fact that this is sufficiently simple that it can be built right into the camera's processor, as in the microcoded processor in the side of the camera has the algorithm for doing this, means that in all actuality, since it costs power to write to the memory, saving that extra space in the memory card and not using as much memory actually saves power as well. So you end up with a lower power system with more capabilities, basically for including an algorithm.